So let's go ahead and get started with uh, Jung, which is the library I use for um, for doing graphs in Java. Now, if you are not going to be working in Java, uh, I'm not really sure what kind of um, what kind of uh, graph library you should use. That's something to work up, look up on your own. But if you're using Python, then you'll want to you'll want to use Network X, which is one you can acquire uh, pretty straightforward, right? I don't have it on my computer, but I can get it by doing um, by doing pip. And that's the library you'd want to use for uh, Python if you're doing it in Python. But otherwise, um, I would I'm going to show you how to use Yunk. Or Jung. So Jung is the Java Universal Network Graph Framework. It's jung.sourceforge.net. Okay. Um, and so here are the important pages for you to know. There's this overview page, which you should totally read. There's the documentation. And then there's examples. All three of these are super important. If you are lost, take a look at this. Um, specifically, the documentation over here. Um, specifically over here and over here to the 2.0 uh, tutorial. Okay, the tutorial will show us how to use it, um, show us how to build some graphs. But here, right, this is a API, this is a list of all the classes that are included in here. Uh, the most important of which is, is uh, go, uh, kind of goes without saying, is the graph class. Um, right, so we've got, um, let's see, so we've got the graph interface over here, right, and if you're lost, come here because there is a list of all of the methods that a graph has, um, which is kind of useful, and <clears throat> often you're going to be using something like a sparse graph. Um, to to solve your problems, and this is all the methods a sparse graph has, which is a whole lot to solve your issues. So just be sure to check that out. Now, um, so that's the th so you've got yourself a tutorial on how to use this. You've got a sparse gra a graph. So let's go ahead. Sorry, we've got our API, which tells us how to how to work with it. So let's go ahead and download it. So to there we go. Download. We go here. Download, and you can either click here or you can go to click here on Jung, click on the most recent version. And if you end up going here, do not download the sources of the API. That's not what you want. You want the classes themselves. All right. And I've went ahead and already downloaded it. Now, once you've downloaded it, you'll want to unzip these files. Right. And in the folder, there will be a bunch of jar files or Java archives. And if we look at these things, right. If we look at, if we were to open these with, um, if we were to look inside of it, these are folders that have package names, and inside of them are class files, are Java class files. So they're compiled class files for you to use. Now, how do we use these things? Well, let's t take a look first at Eclipse because I know a lot of you use, you use Eclipse. I won't be able to do a, um, I unfortunately won't be able to do a NetBeans example. I don't have it on my computer. So let's go ahead and start a, um, oh, do I not have a, um, oh, I'll have to come back to that. I think I have to install, I'll have to install Java specifically for this, or specifically that. So I'll go ahead and do NetBeans, sorry, uh, IntelliJ first, and then the next video I'll show Eclipse. So for this, right, create a class called graph test. Under no circumstances should you call it graph because we're gonna be using a data structure called a graph a whole lot. So that would be kind of self-defeating defeating there. All right, so the first thing you'll want to do is go and get all of your uh, jar files, copy them, right? And then the next thing you're going to want to, so go ahead and copy them, either Control C, and just like you would a, uh, and just like you would for a text file or something that you want to read, you need to put it in the top level directory over here. So let's go ahead and we'll paste them in over here, copy the specified files, 
right? Notice they're here. And that is not enough, though, um, once you copy these things in. Right, once you copy these things in, it's not enough. Hold on a second. Oh, it's going from my previous one. Once you, so I've already done this, but what you'll want to do after you, um, after you add in all these files is that there will be a term, there's going to be a line down here which says to add library, add as a library. You'll want to click on that and hit OK. Um, see if I can't remove this from a library. Um, we'll be in library settings. So let's go ahead and um, yeah, so let's go ahead and remove these from the library just to show how, the, how that works. Okay, right? So the way you would add them to the library, once you copy them in, it will look like this. To add to, add as library, you would go, and this would tell this tells IntelliJ that these are stuff that you want to look at, right? Yeah, these are things you want to use. And now, once now that they're inside, we can start. Uh, how do we know this will work? Start typing graph. Say you want a graph of strings. To um, let's say with strings to, yeah. Actually, let's go ahead and let our vertices be integers and our graph. Uh, sorry, and our edges be strings it's equal to so graph G is equal to a new sparse graph okay and what we'll do is we'll say let's go ahead and populate it G dot add edge um, add edge let's go ahead and add uh, the edge so two if three Let's see, hold on. Add edge between these two vertices. What are you doing here? Let's go ahead and actually turn this into a sparse graph. We might need to do that as well. Sparse graph as well. Ah, there we go. So here, right, I said that the edge is a string, so we'll say that the edge is called 2, 3 because it goes between 2 and 3. Yes, there we go. That was the notation. Next, let's go ahead and add an edge between the nodes um, uh, 4 and 6, and we're going to call it um, lazy we can call it whatever we want so long as we don't reuse the same edge uh, label right and then to test it out right notice that I didn't add any vertices I don't have to in this one you can add vertices individually but if you add an edge and the and neither of the vert and one of the vertices doesn't exist then it will just simply make it for you so run this And notice that it says our vertices are 2, 3, 4, 6, and we've got edge 23 that goes between 2 and 3, and edge lazy that goes between 4 and 6. So um, that's how we get started with this in IntelliJ.